then that God is cultivating. Now, if you look at it in CV, CV will say, Apollos and I work together for God. Then he says, and you, the church, are God's garden. So my life is God's garden. My destiny is God's garden. Everything that you are in is God's garden in God's building. Say in the name of Jesus. I will not suffer shame for I am God's garden. Declare in the name of Jesus. I enjoy wholeness. I enjoy wellness. I enjoy perfection. I enjoy beauty because I am God's garden. So you must begin to carry that consciousness that the entirety of your life, the summation of your life, the fullness of your life is God's garden under cultivation. It's God's building under construction. Now, for me, this is interesting because it says you are God's garden and you are God's building. You are God's garden and you are God's building. I am God's garden and I am God's building. When you look at it in the easy to read version, so that now I begin to run. He says, we are workers together. Is it read version? Uh -huh. He says, we are workers together for God. And you, the church, are like a farm. Now, why for me that is powerful? It's because this one introduces a certain kind of understanding which every one of us must capture for us to fulfill our days. He says, you are like a farm that belongs to God. He introduces ownership. Are you understanding? So you are a farm that belongs to God. Now, if I'm a farm that belongs to God, it begins to tell me that God determines what grows in me. Yeah. He says you are a farm that belongs to God. It also tells me God determines my seasons. It also tells me God determines what grows in me in a certain season. Amen. It also tells me God determines what exists and what is plucked and pruned out. Are you under, can we go on on this one? He says you are God, you are a farm that belongs to God. It's a powerful understanding we must catch as we think of destiny. That your life is not just like the life of anyone else. Your life is a farm that belongs to God. So when you look at yourself, you begin to culture your heart in a certain light. You begin to tell certain truths to yourself that I am a farm that belongs to God. I am a farm that belongs to God. So God owns me. I belong to God. For example, whenever your body is sick, one of the understanding you must carry is that God does not just want to heal you. God does not want you sick. You see, these are two understanding. One person knows God wants them to heal, to be healed. Another person understanding that in the first place, he does not want me sick. Because my body is a farm. So when Satan wants to plant cancer, this God who owns me, are you getting it? So one more time shout, I am a farm that belongs to God. So why your business will not see shame? Why you will not struggle? Is because you are that belongs day in day out you culture your heart. You tell yourself I am a farm that belongs to God. So my ministry will not die because it is a farm so men can try to do whatever they want to do but I'm not going under because I am so when you get into marriage your marriage will not fail in the name of Jesus because your marriage is part of a farm are you getting it now so you sit in the office with a new understanding that I am one more time I am in the name of Jesus I am one more time I am in the name now there is a version I don't know if these people have it there it's called um, it's called first nations version 
find it somewhere. They will find it somewhere as I continue. I don't have time. First Nations version, I want you to hear how it gets it. Philip, you have to get it there so that everyone can see it. Now, I'm sorry I didn't prepare you. He says, for we are working. I want you to hear. For we are working, the minister is speaking. For we are working, it's called First, versions, nation, first, first Nations Version or translation. He says, for we are working side by side with the help of the Great Spirit. Then he says, you, the church, are creator's garden where he grows good fruit. You know, even if I did not want versions, the things I see when I study, they are just too sweet. Look at what he says. You are creator's garden where he grows. I, I want you to hear what God is growing in your life. You are a garden mwende where God grows. So if it's not good, it's not from my God. If the fruit is not good, is not from God. He says, I am creator's garden where he, the creator, grows good fruit. Then he says something very interesting on the building. He says, have you gotten it, sir? All right, they are working on it. He says, you are the sacred lodge where he has chosen to live. You have to get it. You know, when we talk of lodgings, in our day, I would read it as you are the Airbnb that he has chosen. Okay. You are the apartment <laughs> that he has chosen to live. You are the bungalow that he has chosen to live. You are the mansionette that he has chosen to live. You are the villa that he has chosen. Uh, hey, he is saying you are the skyscraper. Now, what we have done is no matter the size of the building you want, he tells you that God has chosen to live in you. So I like, he says, you are the sacred building where God has chosen to live. Now, I'm emphasizing something. You are the sacred lodge or building where God has chosen to live. God has chosen to live in you. I hope you are getting We are not asking him to come and live. He has made a decision. I will live in you. He has decided freely. You know, me no devil can tell me that God is saying, oh, maybe I will live just right. No. Before I could say yes. You see, I said yes because he said yes. My yes was responding to his yes. So I am the building that God has chosen to live. I am the garden where God grows good fruit. You have to note it down. That you are alive is the garden that God grows good fruit. Your life is the garden where God grows good fruit. So whenever, whenever you think, for example, and you're praying concerning your life, you say in the name of Jesus, in the month of April, thank you that you are growing good fruit through in my life. That through my life, my good fruits are seen. That through my life, good fruits are on display. My life is the garden where God grows good fruit. I'm talking about your business. That your business is the garden where God grows good fruit. I'm talking about your relationship, your marriage, your career, and your studies. In the name of Jesus, your very life is the garden where God grows good fruit. Say in the name of Jesus, only good fruits come from my life. One more time, say in the name of Jesus. Only good fruits come from my life. One more time, say, I am the garden where God grows good fruit. Say, I am the building where God has chosen to live. Say, in the name of Jesus, I am the garden where God, has, where God grows good fruit. Say, I am the building where God has chosen to live. So, meaning, if you have been having signs of sickness, as you accept this light, those signs begin to flee in the name of Jesus. It's because of a sudden there is a new consciousness. There is a fresh understanding. There is a fresh illumination. There is a fresh light that is coming your way that you are the garden where God 
gross good fruit. Come on, say it. I am. So you look at your margins. You look at your revenues. You look at your sales. You look at the outcome of your life. And you say, I am the garden where God grows good fruit. One more time. I am the garden where God grows good fruit. And then you say, I am the building where God has chosen to live. One more time. I am the building where God has chosen to live. In the name of Jesus, I am the building where God has chosen to live. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this understanding. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for this understanding. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this understanding. In the name of Jesus, that we are the garden where you are growing good fruit. Can you imagine when you think of you are going out and you are coming in? You say, out of me or from me or in me grows good fruit. That's a powerful word. That you are the garden where God grows in the name of Jesus. The passion says, we are co-workers with God and you are God's cultivated garden. The house he is building. <laughs> you are God's cultivated garden. The house he is building. One more time. I am One more time. One more time. So when you think of God now, you call him your gardener. You call him your cultivator. So you are God's cultivated garden. Then he says the house he is building. You know why I'm emphasizing on those words? He is building, present day, continuous. It tells me, if you are, there are things you don't like in your life, you don't get into depression. You awaken to a consciousness that you are the building that God... One more time. I am the building... You will not go under. You are the building... You will not see shame. You are the building... You will not know failure. You are the that God is building. So you are the building. He is building. So you begin to tell yourself, all they see of me is not all there is. Because God is building me. So when people write you off, you don't buy into that narrative. Because you understand you are the building that God is building. One more time. I am that God. One more time. I am now look at verse number 16 of the same chapter in, uh, in the passion. I believe I have. Give me how many more minutes? Ten more minutes. Uh -huh. So I just touch on something. I stop. Uh -huh. He says, don't you realize uh -huh, that together you have become one more time. Don't you realize he is telling you that when you look at the church corporately, he says the church is God's inner interesting that you, you, you and I constitute God's inner sanctuary. Look at the next thing. And that One more time. And that. One more time, like you believe it. The Spirit. One more time. The Spirit makes. One more time. The Spirit of God. So, in me is this permanent residence of the Holy Spirit. So I am God's inner sanctuary and then inside me the spirit of God has made his 
permanent dwelling. Now I'm going somewhere. If you get it. That are inside you, in you, the Spirit of God has made his permanent residence. So he does not just visit. He indwells you. No. Now the idea here is, is that God cultivates you from the inside. Yo, get it. God builds you from the inside. My God, please see it. He cultivates you, sir, not fast outwardly, but he cultivates you from the inside out. So when God is building, and you must get it, because this is where so many of God's people, this is what God's people don't understand, and they certain lies to them. God does not first build outwardly. God beats from the inside. Now, when God is working on you, he does not first work on what people see. He works on you. That means you may not see like money has come. But if on the inside you can get the concept of our finances, very soon people will see it. Are you understanding? It's like, that's why people say, how comes life here can change too? It doesn't just change. He works on your inside, and when he has fixed your inside, outward follows. So the Spirit of God, who is the Spirit, and I will show you the various expression of this Spirit who dwells in us, and then we put a comma, is that he is working on our inside. We have to start asking ourselves, how does he work on our inside? But let's first read that First Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 16, in the message, in the message, Haya. Higher. You are going to love it. In the message, in the message. Look at it. He says, you realize, don't you, that you are the temple of God and God himself read it, is now we are used to he is present with me. Now tonight as we talk about the garden, the building and the tree or the branch, we are discovering that he is present. So meaning, when you think of how God works on us, you discover your inner state is as important as your outward. Okay, let me show you a verse that will help us get it. Go to Romans chapter 12. Uh, in Romans chapter 12, I want to start with the passion. Is it fine? All right, Romans chapter 12. Uh, let's look at verse number 2. Actually, let's, let's start with the, the normal one. Let's start with NIV. Let's start with NIV. We have six more minutes, dear Lord. He says, do not conform. Romans 12, verse 2, NIV. He says, do not conform to the pattern. Hold on. So he tells you, there is something called the pattern of this world. Now, if there is a pattern of this world, there is also the pattern of the spirit. He's saying do not adapt or become attuned or conformed to the pattern of this world. Now, the pattern there speaks of ideals, speaks of custom, and speaks of designs. So there is how the world builds. And you know, for example, uh, one of the ways that the world builds is that the world builds from the outside. That's why there is a saying in the world, you fake it until you make it. So you put a face that you are not.
of this world. Now, the thing I want us to pick from there is that one of the ways God builds us, or as God builds us, he begins to give us patterns of our destiny. Wow. You have to get it and not say it's complicated. Please hear me. For every destiny, God has a pattern. Aya. For every destiny, God has a pattern. I want you to believe it. That for everything we are in, and for everything we find ourselves in, because it's part of God's building, he has a pattern. Now, it's not just important what you build. It is important the pattern you use. Okay, can, can we go deeper kidogo to Exodus chapter 25 so that you understand it's a holistic perspective. Exodus 25. Look at Exodus 25. Exodus chapter 25. Oh, what a savior. Exodus 25. Look at verse number 9 and then we jump to verse 40. God is speaking to Moses. And uh, he says words that for me are very powerful. Start with NKJV. He says, according to all that I show you, that is the pattern uh, 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 uh. that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern do you remember where we were on Hebrews chapter 3 verse 4 on, th on Tuesday? You remember that in Amplified Classic? We said that every house is built by one man, by someone, right? And then we said there are also its furnishings. You remember that? I, I believe that's where we got to before to end the offline. Now, he is telling you that there is a pattern of your life. Hey. And then two, there is a pattern of what constitutes your life. You know, there is a prayer I want us to make and we have to agree because we are praying and fasting. That God will give us the pattern of our lives. That we are not going to look at your pattern and make it my pattern. Are you getting it, sir? But in that pattern of your life, there is the pattern of everything that constitutes your life. Come. Let me explain it this way. There is a pattern of how God wants to build your business. And then, in that blueprint or pattern of how he wants to build your business, there are the nitty-gritties of how he wants you to build your workers. For example, that's what it means. So he says, make it, this is God speaking to Moses, he says, according to all that I show you, that is, the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all it's furnishing just so you shall make it. So God tells you when I give you a vision it's your responsibility to see to it that your life aligns with the vision. Because you see this is what is happening. When we don't understand these truths, what we have is bare, bare, bare minimum success. And now this is where the problem is. Over time, because the Holy Spirit, remember, he lives where? Hey, come on, he lives where? So within you is the fullness of God. Now, I want, for example, to answer the question why people are frustrated. It's because within you there is so much, but you cannot see it outwardly. Most of the time it's because within you, you know, for example, I don't know if you have been in a state and you know this is not what should be happening. But you also know in your Noah that you don't know the way forward. Let me tell you where the problem is. The Holy Spirit who lives in you carries that fullness of your destiny. But that same Holy Spirit wants to train you step by step on how to actualize it. Say I understand. One more time say I understand. Are you getting what he is saying? He is saying there is the pattern of your building. So for example, for me as a minister, there is the pattern of how God wants to build my ministry. But he is telling me, also there are things that are called the furnishings of my ministry. Now he tells me, for those ones too, there is, the, for example, he tells me, Josiah, your ministry will look like this. This is what, when people think of your ministry, it will be like this. 
But then he tells me there are things that constitute that ministry. For every of those furnishing, there is a pattern. This is why you discover if someone catches a pattern for their business, but they don't catch a pattern for their marriage, they succeed as a businessman and fail in marriage. It will never be your portion in the name of Jesus. They succeed as a preacher or as a servant of God, but they fail in another area. Why? It's because in that man or woman of God, there are furnishings. Do you think we should learn this? This, this is why now when God says we pray, we pray with an understanding that we are not just praying generic prayers, Father, just give me money. No, we are saying, Father, give me pattern. A pattern of my finances. Amen. Oh, yeah. I have told you I cannot be broke. Not just because I confess, but because there is a pattern I have caught about my finances. And my prayer is that every one of us here will catch a pattern concerning the work of their hearts that you will understand. For example, there is how God promotes. For some people, he shifts them quarterly. For others, he shifts them annually. For others, he prepares them for a year, then shifts them. Are you understand? Now, if these two people don't understand their patterns, you know what will happen? You hear people saying, it's like God does not like me. It's like this message does not work. Yet, the same message that is not working is working for another person. The difference is, one has caught the pattern. Say, I understand the pattern. And the scripture said there is something called the pattern of the world. You know what is the pattern of the world? It's the popular narrative. For example, if I bring a, a financial analyst here, there is a generic understanding of financial analysis. Understood. You read a book, you see it. Then sit with another analyst who has taken time to talk to God. They will teach you the generic, and then they will tell you, this is how God told me about mine. <laughs> the difference between these two people is one has a customized one. Wow. Let's look at verse number 40. Don't worry. I will, I will put a comma. If I stop, it's all right. I can continue on Tuesday. Again, I mean, look at verse 40. He says, and see to it or observe that you make them. Now, I started in verse number, number 9. Because for me, nine, it's key when we think that's name. Nine speaks of the pattern of the tabernacle and nine speaks of the pattern of its furnishings. So what we are saying, we are saying, Father, grant us the pattern of our lives. I, I don't know if you have ever heard among the church circles where people talk of evil patterns. Have you heard of such things? Evil cycles and patterns. There is such a thing. But this is the truth. If you can find your pattern from God and in God your pattern of how God work, wants to work with you there is no evil pattern that can hold you ah, he said you shall know the truth and the truth that you know shall make you free how does the truth make you free is you find out your pattern in God and as you embrace it you discover there is no other pattern that can limit you say in the name of Jesus in this season I am discovering my pattern now, look at verse number 9 in the good news. Exodus 25. Verse number 9 in the good news will say, He says, make it and all its furnishings. One more time. Make it according. So, he is telling you now something. In this thing, God begins to give you plans. Now, this should now help us get it. When I spoke of pattern, there were people who were wondering, well, what is this complex thing? Now, he has begun to break down what is this pattern. It's a plan. Meaning, uh, God is a planning God. Okay, let's simplify. God is a master planner. And as a master planner, he has plans for every phase of your life. Now, he tells you, if you have to build, build according to the plan of God. Ah, 
He's telling you he has a plan for your April. So catch his plan. And as you catch his plan, embrace his plan. Wow, 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 wow. Psalm 33, verse number 11. Or oh, let's start with verse number 10. Start with something like NIV. I want us to see it. I'll just give us two more verses and we are going to pray. Look at it. He says, 10, start with verse 10. He says, the Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. He's talking of those without God. Verse 11, look at 11. But, hold on, but, you know what he is telling you? He's telling you when you catch his plan for your life, that plan stands sure, firm, stable, forever. In short, he is trying to tell you something, Eriko, here. He is saying, as you embrace the plan of God, the first thing that begins to come, become of your life is called stability. My God, my God. Find me Isaiah 33. Find me verse number 2 in the Passion and get me the first footnote there. Isaiah 33, verse number 2 in the Passion. Now, look at it. He tells you, the plans of the Lord stand firm. See to it that you build everything. So what is he telling you? He's telling you you have discovered in your life there is this, this plan. Now, when you catch the plan, he's telling you there will be something about that thing. There will be stability. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. That in this month, the Lord begins to stabilize you. So, you find out, Bosco, you discover, you are not just a minister. There is a God's plan for you to be a businessman. When you find that plan, the business you build will not be a voice just today. Is it making sense? You discover you're not just a corporate woman. Within you there is this aspect of business. As you embrace that plan, he tells you that plan. So the structures we are building this year, I prophesy that will stand forever. I'm saying this year, whatever you build will be a voice for a generation. So he says, just fine, you find the plan of God for your ministry. Even if you are in a hole, the plan of God is it making sense? So we don't pattern ourselves after the world. There is someone who lives within us. I tell you, if you open up, whatever God has shown me about this year will so, oh yeah, Enrico, something will be birthed within us. Something will be awakened within you. We'll move from living on bare minimum to a place of impact and influence. To a place of impact and influence. He says the plans of the Lord. Where are they plans? Furnishings. So for every furnishing there is a plan. For every design there is a plan. He tells you the plans of the Lord. Stand firm forever. Then look at the next thing. The purposes of his heart through. What is he telling you? He's telling you if you there are things we are going to start that our children will enjoy, that our grandchildren will enjoy. There are things God is bringing us unto. I have told you the business you are building is not for paying rent. You are not hearing. The building, business you are building is not for buying a car. It is something that will speak for generations. Look at it. The purposes of his heart. Through. Jump before you go to Isaiah. Jump to Psalm 102 verse 22, 28. Sorry. Psalm 102 verse 28. I'm wrapping up so that we can pray. He says Psalm 102 verse 28. Are these things making sense? Say in the name of Jesus, I catch God's plan for my life and for every of my furnishing. Say in the name of Jesus, I am a wise builder. Declare whatever I build stands forever. Declare my generation will enjoy the inheritance I have received of the Lord. Look at Psalm 102, 28. I start with the New King James, then I jump to message and passion. He says, the children of your servants 
Let me help you get it. He's saying the children of those who serve the purposes of God. Imagine as we are here, Mwende, someone is wondering what are you doing in church on a Tuesday evening. Then God is giving you a word. He says the children of your servants. Let me tell you my understanding of this verse. My understanding of this tells me if I go to a doctor and a doctor tells me you cannot have children, I go back to the blueprint. How can I not have children? And the word has said, the children so in the pattern of the world, you can lack children. But in a divine pattern, aya, age is not a factor here. So how can a doctor tell me you cannot? <laughs> I have told you some of my story. When I wanted children, I did not go to see any doctor. You know, you know, Satan, Satan has no manners. You know, he had tried us now when I was ready now to have children. I discovered Pastor Karen is not becoming pregnant. I said, dear Lord. And she told me one time, we go to see Gaina. I told her, prophet, <laughs> seed of Abraham. Being checked, chromosomes and spermatoa. May the Lord give you understanding. I said it cannot happen. I told her we are not going anywhere. Because the children. So there was a light within me. Because I'm his servant. The children of your servant. So they must have children. So that tells you if this ministry serves and it serves the purposes of God. This ministry will always have sons and daughters. Because the children of your servants. So when you pray for your children, you say, Father, thank you for this one. This one endures forever. So when I tell you they will preach earlier, they will prophesy earlier, they will handle millions earlier in different currencies. It's because the children of your servants continue. Continue. <laughs> he says, and they are descendants. Meaning them too, they cannot be barren. Even them. So when your daughter calls you and tells you, mom, it's like their complication, you tell them in the name of Jesus. God said something to be on 9th of April 2024. In the ayah. This is Akato at 8.25 p.m. East African time. You know, I had a man of God I love saying, his daughter had complication in delivery. And when the doctor said it looked like the heartbeat of the child is diminishing, the daughter said, this is what she said. She said, can you get me my phone and call daddy? The daddy is a prophet. She called the father pigs. The father listened and told her, daughter, before you were there was a covenant. Told her, now relax. Leave it to me and my God. And the man of God says he went on his knees. He said, Father, it is written of my children. Kaina Soka. He says within 10 minutes, the son in law called and said, We have just received our twins. I prophesy. What was the difference? The children will continue. And they are this. So you can call your grandchildren. I'm saying we will see our grandchildren. And our great, great, great grandchildren. And we'll be strong enough to prophesy to them. These are truths. This is the pattern of the scripture. He says, the children of your servants will continue. And their descendants will be before. That means our children won't have to go anywhere as slaves. They will prosper as we see. I have told you I will dedicate your huge businesses as you see. We will control every mountain of influence. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus and I fear. We will control every neighborable mountain. Not when we are 50. I'm not talking of 45. I'm saying only God is granting us that. And I'll be asking how before you. That's what makes Christianity sweet. When I see you rising Monday, and I sit down I say dear Lord before me. 
you know, okay, we don't have time. I would have shown you what Jacob said. When Jacob, when, 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 when Joseph brought Ephraim and Manasseh to Jacob in Genesis 47, he said, my soul rejoices that I have not only seen you, my son, whom I thought was dead, but I have seen your children. He said, bring them to me that I may bless them. He laid hands on them. He says, take the place of Reuben. Take the place of Suman. He said, I have given them. What are you saying, sir? We will see, I will see your businesses before me in my days of strength. Why should you make billions when I'm a 90? I need that them to make billions right now so that she can pay my flight to go to Spain for a month. What are you saying? Now, not when. What do you think, Paulo? Now when, I mean, I'm telling you, I was dedicating one of uh, my awesome, awesome daughters, huge truck of, I think it's a 24 or 22 wheeler. And as I climbed on that one, the first one, I have done several for her. As I climbed on that one, all of a sudden I had an experience. I said, Father, thank you. This is not happening when I'm 70. Because 17 in Geshikiri want a protocol. You are not understand. I, I went again down. They didn't know why I went again down. I came back. I said, yeah, it's happening. What are, are you understanding this truth? These are truths we need to get. This thing of uh, we have saved for 20 years. That's why we have it. So if God says give, we cannot give. That thing is not our portion in the name of Jesus. He said there are descendants before you. What do you think will be happening when I dedicate Bosco's child? I'll be before me when I'm strong. Are you getting it there? The this is how the kingdom runs. Now, let's see this one in something like message before we go to see him. And then I take Isaiah. Isaiah is the last one. Our time is up. He says, look at it. <laughs> Please read and never forget. You are Hold on. Hold on. So if Jasphia serves the Lord and you are a son and a daughter, then you are not meant not to have your own place. So when I tell you we are doing entrepreneurs night, it's because you, you, you must have a good place. It's in our Bible. Your servant's children will have, <laughs> not because, regardless of the economy of their day, <laughs> because of their source, they will have a good place to live. Look at the next thing. And their children, imagine, Yani, our children will not struggle with God. This is why they are in church. What do you think they are doing here? They will never struggle with this church thing. No, 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 no. Dad. No, we are changing that narrative. He said, and they will be at home with God and with me. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, look at CB, then you take the passion. Then we go to Isaiah. Isaiah is where I put a comma. I promise I will continue on uh, Tuesday. He says, look at it, sir. You don't have CB. He says, Ev oh, I like it. Every of those who serve God, ay -ya, ay -ya, ay -ya, ay -ya. every generation of those who serve God, they will live in his prayer. It tells me if there were signs and wonders in the days of Moses, the same God is saying my presence lives within you. Now he says in my generation, what will pass to them. We'll call our children, we'll tell them we're not just giving you money and good places to live. But we are commending you to this God. You know Paul, in Acts chapter 20, verse number 32, he had called the elders of the church of Ephesus. Acts 20 from 32. And he tells them, you will not see me again from 22 and all those things. Then he tells them, everything God has shown me, I have shared with you. Then he tells them something very powerful. 
He tells them, now because I'm going, he says, I commend you to God. And then he says, and to the word of his grace, he says, he is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among the saints. What? I have always read and I said, who told Paul this? In short, Paul was trying to tell them, above the gift I have imparted to you, there is something more sure I want to commend you to. Now, the Amplified Classic and the voice will say, I entrust you or I put you under the care of God and the word of his grace. Look, look at where we were. Look at where we were, sir. He was saying now, in the passion, and we are done with that one, I read something in Isaiah, we put a comma, I, pro, I promise I continue on Tuesday. He says, uh, this one in the passion, he says, uh, look at it, generation, our, come on, our, no matter the economy of the day, our, emotionally, spiritually, financially, in every manner of sense, they will live in the time of their being in the marketplace. They will live, look at it, generation after generation, our offspring, our descendants will live securely, for you are the one doing what? So what is God doing? He is and one more time, what is God doing? He is and I'm saying you will not go under. You are God's garden. He is keeping, protecting you and keeping you. I'm telling you, that's why if you miss a deal, you don't die. You say, God is protecting me and he is keeping me for himself. Hi, hi, hi. I'm telling you, uh, no matter the losses you made in March and in the days past, you say, I'm picking up myself. It's the Lord who is protecting me and keeping me for himself. I say in the name of Jesus, anything God has given unto me will not die. The Lord is protecting me and keeping me. So why would they not buy you out? It's because it's the Lord who is protecting you. Then I like the next one. You are the inner sanctuary. Are you remembering those words? You are God's garden. You are God's building that he is building. He tells you now he is protecting you. I don't know if you have, you can travel in the spirit and see the Lord protecting that thing which concerns you. Again, the psalmist said in Psalm 138 verse number in the New King James, it says the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Then he says, for he is full of mercy. He cannot deny the works of his hands. You say, I am the one he is protecting. Oh, and then you say, he is keeping me for himself. That means the news that were meant to cause you to cry. You find yourself laughing and people cannot understand. It's because you have discovered there is nothing that exists that can be a source of disadvantage for you in the name of Jesus. You say, the Lord is protecting me. And the Lord is keeping me for himself. In the name of Jesus, we are talking about our careers. And we are saying, the Lord is protecting you. The Lord is keeping you for himself. Concerning your business, there is protection and safety tonight. The Lord is is protecting you and he is keeping you for himself. Let me read one verse and I'm out of here. Don't worry, I'll read Isaiah on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on Tuesday. Look at Psalm 62. Look at verse number 5. Take it in the CV. Oh, these are verses you should never forget. Our time is up. Father, we thank you. Ah, yeah. Psalm 62, verse 5. CV. Ah, look at it. Uh -huh. Only God and Come on, one more time. Only God. Money does not give inward peace. Only God. And he says, and I depend. So God is protecting you. And he is keeping you for himself. <laughs> he is keeping you for himself. He is keeping. That means all things will work together for your good. They will. 
that thing that was meant to bring you down. You know, he told them in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, we rushed there for a minute. Genesis 50 20, Joseph said something to his brothers that have always amazed me. Look at what he said. Are you able to take something like an KJV and an LT? He says Genesis 50 20. We start with an KJV, then we go to an LT. Aha. Genesis 50 5 0. One is Hittites, Perizzites, Appetites. 5020 says, But as for you, ah, it's the same thing when they were throwing him on that hole, on that hole. When they were selling him, they meant evil. They did not know God was protecting him. And keeping him, I'm trying to tell you, whatever was meant to cause you to cramp. Tonight you must awaken to the fact you are God's garden. You are God's building. Oh yes, you are the garden where good fruits grow. You are the field which he cultivates. You are the building he is building. And then you say, that thing that was meant me to suffer, that thing that was meant to bring me shame, they did not understand. You know, Paul took a deeper in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Well, look at this one first. He said, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people. I'm saying those things you have gone through. Tonight, understand they were never brought to crash. God will use it as a testament, as a testimony. God will use this as a testament. I'm telling you, for so many of us, we raise as the deliverers in our families. That means we access certain levels for the first time in our families. We secure and solidify certain experiences in our families. I'm telling you, there are heartbreaks that had to come so that your marriage will be different. So that you will kill that nonsense of divorce in families. I'm telling you, there are businesses that are hard to die so that now this one you catch the plan of God and you bring your brothers and sisters. He told them God had to do it so that I would be a source of preservation. We have to understand it. All things one day must work together for our good. Not some things. When we catch the plan of God, all sir, all things Bosco, all, all, I'm telling you we have to learn it early all. That's why when things happen, you don't cry. If you must cry, don't cry to men. Cry to God. Only he can give you inner peace and you depend on him. Only, let me tell you, you, your tears must be, let them be seen by God. Let them, let them be seen by God. Let your doubts be known by God. Let your fears and concerns be heard by God. And you discover the answer is he gives you inward peace. And then you say, and I depend on him. I said Paul said something and that's why I'm stopping. First Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse number 6. Uh, start with the New King James. First Corinthians. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2. Look at chapter 2 of First Corinthians. Verse number 6, I'm done. He says, uh-oh. You want to start with message? I want New King James. Uh -huh. He says, verse 6, he says, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Then look at the next thing. Yet, so you see there is this thing of how the present age speaks as wisdom. Then there is the ancient wisdom. He says, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. Then verse 7, he says, look at 7, 7, sir. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before. So within you, the Holy Ghost quickens a wisdom. You begin to know things. Oh, I'll get there on now. Please allow me on Tuesday to talk about those patterns. And I'll show you the strength of those patterns is having the light of God within you. God opens you up to his ways, sir. You go into the marketplace, people don't understand where you learned it from. 
is because within you there is the wisdom of God which was ordained before time was for your glory. It will, look at what he said. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages. Read this one in NLT. Six and seven only. Our time is up. We share the grace. Our time is up. Permit me to start with Isaiah on Tuesday. He says, yet when I'm among the mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs or to the who are interesting. So there is a wisdom that belongs to this one. But he tells you that one is fading away. Look at the next verse. He says, no, the wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God. His, come on, his. Are you seeing how it's connected? So when God tells you, build everything according to plan. Now I'm putting a comma. Build everything according to his wisdom. Are you understanding? So, what we have been talking about as pattern plans is the wisdom of God. So, in short, I'm trying to tell you, God will give you certain wisdom. For some of you who will be telling you, start your business this hour. Close at this hour. Others, he will tell you, for every level, secure it this way. He will tell you, don't go for that interview at this time. Go at this. Oh, yeah. I pray you can understand. He says to Moses, according to the plan shown to you. And now we are discovering that plan one day is wisdom. So there is a wisdom that is coming our way this year. And people will ask, how did you rise to that high place? And then deep down, you know, I caught the, the plan. The plan. The plan. Let's hold hands together and pray for one another for a minute. His plan, his plan, his plan. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Please pray for one another for just a minute. Randa Sokabala Gati and Shebada da 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 that the plan of God, the wisdom of God will be revealed to you and I in a tangible way, in our dreams, in our visions, that tonight the plan of God, the plan of God, let it be revealed. Tonight we are praying, let the plan of God, let the plan of God, let the deep wisdom of God be revealed to you and I in Ask him for that wisdom. Ask him for that plan. Ask him for that design. Ask him for that light. Jesus, we thank you for tonight. In the name of Jesus, we are grateful that, Lord, our hearts are set. Our minds are set, Lord, to download these plans, these designs, these blueprints of our lives in the name of Jesus. That for everyone who came with any burden, any care, any concern, any weight. Tonight let it be lifted. And tonight let the Lord minister inward peace. I'm saying let him minister inward peace within you. In the name of Jesus. For you have been asking where he is. 
tonight, let that presence of God saturate your heart. Let that presence of God saturate your heart. In the name of Jesus, he will keep you in perfect peace. And tonight, he keeps you in perfect peace. As your heart and mind trust in him, as you learn to depend on him, whatever was meant to, be, to end in calamity, I prophesy it's ending in your glory. It's ending in your glory. Your story is a God story. Your story is a God story. Your story is a God story. Tonight, whatever light you need, let it begin to shine in your heart. Let it begin to shine in your mind. You will not make a mistake again. You will not make a mistake again. Any pattern that is of the evil world is disconnected from your life. Your life is disconnected from that pattern. Patterns of recurring losses. Patterns of stagnation. Patterns of death. Patterns of ideas collapsing at the place of manifestation. Tonight open up to the patterns of God. Tonight open up to the plans of God. Tonight open up to the designs of God. In the name of Jesus. Let him minister peace. Let him minister clarity. Let him bring peace in the name of Jesus. Father, I bless your people. And I ask that the work you have begun tonight, continue, Master, that by the time we gather on Thursday, on Sunday, on Tuesday, there will be wondrous testimonies of how your wisdom has become real to us. For everyone on the online space, whatever business you do, in the name of Jesus, let the Lord give you an advantage. He said, the Holy Spirit is our advantage. He said, it's to your advantage that I go, because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. I pray for everyone who works virtually. Let the Lord give you an insight, an understanding that will give you an advantage, something that will give you a cutting edge, something that cannot be denied, something unique in the name of Jesus. Keys, keys, keys keys, keys, thank you Father keys in the name of Jesus for everyone who is starting anything whatever is called a startup, I prophesy in the name of Jesus wisdom, wisdom, understanding and knowledge when King Solomon was starting his rulership, he asked the Lord for wisdom, he asked the Lord for understanding he asked the Lord for knowledge he said that I may know how to go in and to go out. I prophesy to everyone at whichever level of startup, receive that wisdom of going in and receive that wisdom of going out. In the name of Jesus, I place the blessing of the Lord upon you. I place the name of the Lord upon you. In accordance with Numbers chapter 6, verse number 25 and 26, it's this way they shall bless you. Placing the name of the Lord upon you. I place that name upon every one of us. That something new will be seen of your life. Something new will be read of your life. Something fresh will be interpreted of your life. In the name of Jesus, we thank you Lord. We honor you. Thank you for tonight. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us now. Amen and amen. Father, thank you. Want to celebrate him? This, this is good. This is a beautiful time. This is a beautiful, beautiful time. Our confession this month or this week is from Psalm 23, verse 6. We can confess it as we package our offerings and as we appreciate our visitor. Look at it. Psalm 23, verse 6 in the CV is our confession for this week. And it's something everyone of, I want everyone of us to understand. He says, your kindness and love One more time. One more time. Your kindness and love will be with me in the name of Jesus. Your kindness will 
be with me. So this week we expect the kindness of God. This week we expect the love of God to saturate us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for coming. Ask your neighbor, have you been here before? Aha. Uh -huh.